Welcome everyone to the Melanin Initiative. I'm Alicia Brown, this is Kimberly, and that's Geraldine. And we are your co-hosts for the Melanin Initiative podcast. In healthcare, there's often too much information and not enough time. Here at the Melanin Initiative, we avoid TMI by breaking things down into language you can understand. We create a safe space to ask your questions and share our nursing perspective without taking up too much of your time. Today, we'll be talking about thyroid disease. By the end of the episode, it's our goal that you'll be able to explain the role and location of the thyroid, discuss common thyroid disorders, signs and symptoms, causes and risk factors for thyroid disease, and treatment options for various thyroid disorders. Kimberly, why don't you lead us through our disclaimer? Remember everyone, this show is for educational purposes only. The opinions expressed are our opinions alone. They are not a representation of any of our affiliations. If you're experiencing a medical emergency, you should seek medical guidance and medical attention from your healthcare provider. If you're having a physical emergency, you can call 911. And if you or someone you know is having a mental health emergency, you can call 988. Perfect, thank you. So I think first we should start very basic and just talk about the where the where the thyroid is and what it does. So ladies, take it away. Why don't we start there? All right. So the thyroid gland is located at the base of the neck. Um, it is the function of the thyroid is that it produces hormones that regulate the body's metabolism, um, growth and development. It plays a role in controlling your heart muscle. It plays a function in your digestive system. It also has a role in brain development and bone. Um, maintenance. Its correct functioning also depends on a good supply of iodine um, in your diet. Great. So yeah, if you're watching us on YouTube, we've put up our, bringing back our slides, because <laughs> we think it helps with getting the message across. And sometimes these topics can be a little bit easier to digest when you can see something. Mm -hmm. So here we have the thyroid gland, as you can, as at the base of the neck, like Geraldine said, and it's in front of the trachea, also known as your breathing pipe. Perfect. And so on top of that, are you have four little tiny glands called the parathyroid. Most people don't know they exist unless they have a problem. And they're usually found incidentally, right? Yeah. So you so tip so actually my mom was having some problems with her thyroid this earlier this year where her calcium was elevated. And so it had been elevated for maybe like a whole year. And they kept telling her to do different things to try to get those numbers down, taking away like her supplements and changing things in her diet. And it just it just wasn't going down. And so they were looking at um, both her thyroid and parathyroid at that time because the parathyroid is associated with regulating your calcium. There are a number of different diseases that can be wrong with your thyroid. In our last episode, season uh, two, episode one, if you haven't watched it, make sure you go back. We talked about our favorite topic, primary care. <laughs> and one of the things we emphasized was how important it is to share information with your healthcare provider because you can have one symptom and it can be associated with a number of diseases. So in this picture, we have uh, six different problems that can be wrong with the thyroid, but you can come in with like, maybe you just have neck pain or discomfort. And without that history taking, without asking you those questions, we won't really, won't be able to get to the, the proper diagnosis as quickly as if we have the right, all the information available. So, um, actually I can't see any of that. <laughs> <laughs> So there's the different uh, diseases that are on the screen displayed in front of you are thyroid cancer, there's thyroid nodules, um, thyroiditis, which could be from inflammation or infection of the thyroid, there's goiter, there's hypothyroidism, which we'll discuss a little bit, and hyperthyroidism, which we will also discuss a little bit further. So as far... Oh. Okay, yeah, so as far as um, hypo and hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism is where the thyroid gland does not produce enough of the thyroid hormone. And inversely, hyperthyroidism is where the thyroid gland produces too much of the thyroid hormone. Um, having either one is not good. <laughs> we don't want um, either one of those. So common um, causes and risk factors. So I'll start off with uh, hypothyroidism. So common causes in um, 
risk factors of hypothyroidism is autoimmune disease, having thyroid surgery, which essentially is a thyroidectomy where they remove the thyroid gland completely. And we'll get into different reasons why they may do that. Um, radiation therapy can also affect uh, the thyroid gland, um, thyroiditis, like Alicia mentioned, which is the inflammation or infection of the thyroid and then different medicines as well that you can take, they uh, can de they can affect your thyroid gland and the thyroid hormone. Okay, let's back up to the other picture real quick. So like Geraldine said, your thyroid is responsible for metabolism. So that's either how fast or slow something goes. Mm -hmm. And the body doesn't work the way it's supposed to if things are too slow. So you can have, we have a picture here of different symptoms which I cannot see. But one of the <laughs> one of the more common ones are like yeah. you might gain weight, right? And then oh, is that what it has here though? So I just want to make sure it has so the same. When we're talking about different symptoms would be hair loss, feeling cold, that goiter that we talked about, which is like the enlargement, you can physically see it. Um, fatigue, mood and memory changes, high cholesterol, heart rate, slow heart rate. Mm -hmm weight gain, constipation, dry skin and uh, hair, brittle nails, menstrual changes, and sore muscles and joints. Yeah, and those are all examples of when certain parts of the body are moving too slowly, and so you just don't get the optimal outcome that you want. So your metabolism is too slow, you gain weight. You don't get enough blood flow or circulation, your hair falls out. Right. You don't. And also blood is responsible for keeping your body warm. So exactly. naturally, if it doesn't circulate at an optimal speed, you're going to be more cold. Yeah. Can you be cold with a lot of other diseases? Absolutely. Right. And that's where that information that you can share with your provider becomes so important. OK, so now we're going to talk about are we talking about medicines now? Well, before we talk about medicine, I think we should also talk about, we, we were just talking about hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. So I think we should also touch base on hyperthyroidism, although it's less commonly seen, um, it still exists. So with hypo- Oh, but don't we want to oh. close out hypo? Okay. Close out. Okay. Yeah, we're going to close <laughs> it out and then move on so they don't get confused. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, so here we have another graphic up comparing the two diseases. Um, so first, we're just going to focus on hypo. So like we mentioned, all those things, particularly thyroid cancer, the goiter, which is an enlargement. And if, you're, if your thyroid is going too fast, they might take it out. So once you remove that organ, we need to get it. So it's too low and we need to get it back to like a, a middle ground. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the medications that we might give you, a very common medication, is Synthroid also known as uh, the levothyroxine. So with that medication, you usually take it in the first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. And it's something that you take, if you have hypothyroidism, you're taking it for a life. Um, Especially if they remove the organ. Yeah, if you remove your thyroid, you have to. There are some, I, I have had some patients that I've seen that have been on the medication because of their levels. And the, for, you know, after medication management, they were able to come off of the medication. However, the people that have had like thyroidectomies where they remove the thyroid gland completely, they are on uh, lipothyroxine or Synthroid for life. It's a very tiny, tiny pill. We know that people don't like to take medications. <laughs> and a lot of the patients we see who are on it typically are older, retired adults. So they might already be taking a handful of medications. Um, some people do cut them in half. Is that a safe thing to do? No, <laughs> this medication shouldn't be crushed or cut. You got, you should take it whole. But as Kimberly said, it is a small pill. So we're hopeful that, you know, maybe you could gulp it down with maybe some applesauce yes, or yes. ice cream, you know, Excellent. whatever, you know, yeah. helps you get it down. down. <laughs> yeah. Right. I haven't really had too many patients complain about that one. Yeah. And yeah. even when people like have issues with memory, they remember, there's some medications people remember, like they even when they're that. really <laughs> confused, thyroid, blood pressure, and diabetes. Like they, <laughs> they remember those medications it's, and pain, obviously. And so, yeah, once you get placed on that medication, that is one that we don't know it's working unless we like draw your blood. Mm -hmm. And so when you first get on that dose, they might have you come back and like, what, four to eight weeks mm -hmm. Usually, yeah. and then if they change the dose um it'll you'll come back again at that now once you're stable then they can extend the next time you need your blood drawn but yeah that's a that's one where it's very important that you follow with primary care absolutely because there really is no other way to know if it's working or not and you could be having some 
adverse or negative reactions to the medication and a simple dose change can fix that. One thing I wanted you ladies to emphasize a little, a little more on is perhaps the goiter. Um, that is something that um, is pretty prominent. It is. Yeah. So, um, Keyword. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to touch on it here? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's an enlargement so when um, of the thyroid gland, and it can be, you know, sometimes it's not as big as large as what we what's depicted in the uh, photo here. However, you'll you it's sometimes quite noticeable. You'll have um, like some swelling in the neck area that's not normal for you, and that's a good indicator that hmm something's wrong. I need to go see my primary care doctor to figure out, or my primary care provider to figure out what's what's going on there. Yeah, and it, it's not always a scary thing. Yeah. It could just be enlarged for a number of reasons. Maybe you just had a viral infection, okay. a cold, and it might be temporarily swollen. And so that's just a great place to talk about the, the physical exam. Mm -hmm. And so your provider will use their fingers, place it over your, you can do this yourself while, we're, while you're listening <laughs> to the Melanin Initiative, and you'll just put your fingers on the side of your um, your when when. Pipe, <laughs> your trachea. trachea. <laughs> and all the medical terms. I'm trying to remember the the not medical terms, the non jargon. And so you'll put your hand, your fingers on the side, and if you when you swallow, you'll feel a gland go up and down, and that's your. And to, we kind of describe it like an H. So on the sides of your neck are like the vertical lines of an H, and then going across is. Um, the horizontal line. The horizontal line. <laughs> and if you put your fingers there, you can feel it. And so, you know, after you've felt like a hundred necks, you're going to notice when there's something abnormal. So, yeah, so that, yeah that's how we pretty much assess. So but, that part's that's not, well, it's typically not painful. Obviously, if your neck is as large as that other lady, you're likely having some pain. And then they might have you follow up with like an ultrasound. Again, not really painful, but if, if you're having pain and swelling and they have to push um, a probe against your neck, you might be sensitive to that. And then if they need to follow up even further and do a biopsy, you know, there is a needle involved there. And that's actually what did, my mom did have to go through at the beginning of the year to find out for sure what was actually causing her calcium to be um, abnormally elevated. And there was some pain, a little bit of pain associated with that, but they used some numbing pain and that helped her. Yeah, but these are all things that like, you won't know unless you go into your primary care provider's office. So like, even if, you know, you're, when in doubt, just go and ask, mm -hmm. like go in, it's better to be safe than sorry than dealing with um, an illness that you, you're, you're, it's not good to just sit there and suffer, just see your primary care provider so they can either rule it out or if it is, if that's what's happening, they can put you um, on some sort of treatment. And I think um, just, you know, from my nursing perspective, uh, a lot of times people feel chronic fatigue and weight gain mm -hmm. and they automatically assume it's a thyroid issue. So, um, you know, a lot of women um, get a little older, maybe they transition into their 30s and uh, different things happen. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, this is real life, right? But but you eat a little more tired than you usually are, yeah. gain a little more weight, and everybody's here telling you it's your thyroid, it's your thyroid. But nonetheless, it's important you go get it checked out. You never know. <laughs> There's so many things it could be, yeah. that cause fatigue and weight gain. So don't don't let the old wise tales of it's all your thyroid uh, send you down a spiral. Just go get, <laughs> right. go get it checked out. <laughs> Good point. And even I had a close friend who had to go through like a bunch of these procedures I just talked about and ended up being thyroid cancer, obviously not a diagnosis you want to receive, but she had this surgery. She's taking the pill and she's lived, you know, her life has continued. Yeah. So if you think about all your cancers and all your negative diagnoses, that's not a bad one to get if you catch it in time. And the graphic on the screen is just depicting thyroid cancer, just a, a visualization of what that could look like. So yeah, you know, there's a small space in your neck. Once you start having these extra growths, it doesn't take long to start causing problems. There's not a lot of room for things that weren't already supposed to be there. So yeah, so just go get it checked. And I was telling the ladies, so I've heard a few stories where nurses have been watching just like TV mm -hmm. and they've seen a little bit of swelling in someone's neck. They um, message the show told them their concerns, that person followed up, ended up being diagnosed with something like cancer, had it removed, and they were, you know, they just went on with their life after that. So I think we talked a lot about hypothyroid. Is there anything more that we want to 
um, emphasize when it comes to hyperthyroid. I know it's not as common um, of a thyroid disorder as hypothyroid, but I do think there may be some things worth mentioning. Yeah, great point. So we'll, we can put the other graphic that has sure. it side by side. Yeah. That makes it a little bit easier for people to kind of see the difference. Yeah, so as previously mentioned, this hyperthyroid hyperthyroidism is when the thyroid gland produces too much of the thyroid hormone. Um, some of the causes in sorry, I can't see that either. <laughs> you might want to. Yeah, Alicia's gonna share with us yes. <laughs> the, the different <laughs> symptoms. So I know they have like um the heart rate can get really fast mm -hmm. and excessive sweating. Yeah, so uh, with hyperthyroid, you could have weight loss or weight gain. Mm -hmm. um, you could have... I think the weight loss one. I think we see the weight loss one more. More, more right. Hyper, yeah. yeah. Increased sweating, nail thickening and flaking, nervousness and anxiety, mm -hmm. muscle weakness, diarrhea, yeah. racing heart, heat intolerance, puffy or bulging eyes, um, short and light periods. So pretty much... The opposite effects of hypothyroidism are what you would experience in hyperthyroidism. Something I would probably no note is the puffy or bulging eyes. So yeah. just like with um, the goiter, that's another thing that um, is a physical like a noticer yeah. for um, folks that, have, that are experiencing mm -hmm. hyperthyroidism. And yeah, the exophthalmus, right? Yeah. yeah. And then that's usually associated with Graves' disease. So yeah. you mentioned like um, the diarrhea, because remember, we're thinking about metabolism. Correct. So things are moving too quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And so when your food's not a lot, given enough time for water to be absorbed from your intestines, mm -hmm. it comes out soft or liquidy even. And then you had mentioned some other ones I really liked. Nervousness and anxiety. Oh, yeah. Definitely, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everything. And They're then like, yeah. 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 Now, not everyone, and I, I so they recorded a few episodes already for season two and I was watching them and you had mentioned something about anxiety and how that is like a healthy emotion to have, yes, right? And, it's, and it doesn't mean that any, it's just a natural part of life. Some, you know, might be temporary. Yeah. And so, yeah, just because you have anxiety, it doesn't mean you have thyroid problems. Also, we just want to oh, mention yeah. that. <laughs> Um, I also want to mention that there are some symptoms that um, both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism sure. could have you uh, feeling. So they both could have you feeling fatigue. Mm -hmm. They both could have you feeling insomnia or mm -hmm. the ability to um, fall asleep. And they also they both could also have you experiencing hair loss. So that's those are those three kind of symptoms but that I previously mentioned that just because you have them doesn't necessarily mean you have a thyroid issue, but it could mean we have to do some further testing, right? Yeah. We don't really know. So um, just keep that in mind as well. That's a great point because mm -hmm. people always think we're supposed to know the answer right away or right. that we're actually very common is that we're experimenting on them. And it's not that we're experimenting on you, it's that medicine is a science and it does take steps to get to the right answer. Mm -hmm. And so it does require some patience. All right, let's uh, talk a little bit about um, Graves' disease. Excellent. So that is what we a, a hyperthyroid um, disease, and that kind of still has those same symptoms that we talked about: the exothalamus, which is those bulging eyes, the goiter, arrhythmias and tachycardia, which is an abnormal rhythm, and a fast heart rate, nausea, diarrhea, mm -hmm. um, abnormal menstrual cycle, muscle weakness, tremor. So. When you think about, like, once again, the metab metabolism moving fast, things are speeding up. Mm -hmm. This is just the official name of all of that put together. It's called Graves' disease. Yeah, so your body's meant to function a certain way, where certain hours of the day are meant for, like, going and working. Yeah. And then there's a part of the day that's supposed to be rest and digest. And when you don't get enough of that because your system is either moving too fast or too slow, you can see how every organ, every body part is impacted usually the opposite of how it's supposed to work. So let's talk about what happens if I get Graves' disease or I have hyperthyroidism. What uh, treatment options are out there for me? So with hyperthyroidism, you can, there are different options. It's not very, it, hyperthyroidism is not something that we commonly see. We see more hypothyroidism. However, it's still um, out there. So there's a medication called methamazole, meth 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tapazole. I always have trouble saying that word. Or uh, the brand name of it is Tapazole. And um, that medication is taken to help lower the thyroid hormone. But most commonly with pa patients that have hyperthyroidism, they get um, a radioactive iodine and then surgery where they remove the thyroid completely. And this is a thyroidectomy. Some people have partial thyroidectomies and some have um, full. Um, but essentially, if you have your thyroid removed, you are going to be on that medication that we mentioned earlier, level th levothyroxine, also known as Synthroid, for life because you no longer have a thyroid gland. So we need to replace those hormones with that medication. Another medication that's sometimes used for people that have hyperthyroidism is um, beta blockers. And um, these drugs are... Um, they block the action of the thyroid hormone in the body. They don't necessarily change the levels of hormones in your blood, but they can help manage the symptoms like that you experience when you have like that rapid heartbeat, that nervousness. Um, sometimes people that have hyperthyroid, hyperthyroidism have the shakiness. Um, and this treatment isn't usually used alone. It's usually paired with another um, treatment plan, but ultimately, and sometimes as you mentioned earlier that they, um, when we were talking earlier, that they pair this medication uh, they put people on this medication as they're waiting for their thyroidectomy. Yeah, for their surgery. So mm -hmm. yeah, beta blockers, typically that's going to be some kind of blood pressure medication. And that's to slow everything down. Mm -hmm. Because if your heart's beating too fast, you can't get enough oxygen to your, your vital organs. And that's something we definitely want to prevent from happening. Right. And yeah, it might be, it's typically temporary. The iodine, it helps to also slow down, slow down that um, elevated metabolism level. And sometimes they'll do that just to see if that even if you don't even need surgery right. after that. Um, but for those people who do, they'll they'll go on and have surgery. Great. Mm -hmm. So we shared a lot today. So to <laughs> recap, we talked about the role and the location of the thyroid gland. We explained some common thyroid disorders and their signs and symptoms. We talked about some causes and some risk factors for both hypo and hyperthyroidism and the treatment options for the various thyroid disorders. Jody, you want to take us out? Yeah. So um, this was a thank you, ladies. This was a great <laughs> topic. We actually got this question for during season one to talk about the thyroid. So I'm glad yeah. we were able to do that. Yeah, me too. Um, you can always email us your questions or show ideas. We really take those um, suggestions into consideration when we're creating our show our shows. Um, you can email those ideas at tmi.melanin at gmail.com. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Um, please share the show with your friends. Um, rate, our Apple, rate the Apple podcast and Spotify and leave a comment as this really helps us uh, gain more support for the show and gets uh, helps us to get the message across to those who need it. You can find our social media links and a list of resources related to our conversation today in the description box. Uh, we release a new show weekly on TMI Tuesdays at 10 a.m. on YouTube and all of your favorite podcast apps. Follow, like, and share our content with all of your friends. And thank you so much for watching. Bye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>